Um, and I think it's been huge for us and kind of turning around our defense um, over the last couple of years. So just going to talk a little bit about how we've tracked it, what we've done, and what we've kind of learned from it. Um, I think the number one thing that we learned early on, and this was, you know, I played at Oshkosh uh, for Coach Cerrone, and he always did a great job um, of just having a tackling language. Um, he's really big about language and words and how coaches use that language and those words, you know, to make sure the kids understand what you're talking about. Um, the best example I can give you here is you don't want to go out and do a tackling circuit where all your position coaches are running different tackling drills. And one guy is saying eyes through the thighs. The next guy is saying, you know, bite the ball. Um, we want to make sure that we talk about it before we get on the field, you know, how we are going to talk about that and what our words are going to be. Um, I think belief is huge uh, in everything we do in football. Um, I think it's really important. Um, I'm not advocating for, you know, we're a rugby team, and I'll get into that somewhat, but I'm not telling you you have to be. Uh, it works for us, but we believe in it. Um, I, that's huge. Um, I think what we found out through our rugby tackling is that our tackling drills show up every day. Every game we put on, we can tell you how that, how that tackle tracked, what happened, all those things. Um, and I kind of alluded to earlier in the night, um, effort and pursuit, greater eraser of anything. Um, and I think it's been huge. Um, we've kind of proven it through the years. If you're missing a tackle, but it's only a three yard gain after that missed tackle, you're probably going to win a lot of ball games. Um, and that just, you know, that pursuit, that kind of effort is just really what separates our good defenses from our great defenses. Um, so just real quick, I'm going to kind of go back in history. This is all the way back in 2010. And what I'm just kind of showing you is the, the, the fundamental things that we talked about in tackling. Uh, there's a ton of words. Um, I can send this to anybody. Uh, I'll have my email on here at the end. Um, I can send this to anybody, but this was how we talked. This were the words that we wanted to use when we went out there and did tackling drills and then throughout the game. Um, we talked about great leader or great tacklers being confident, having great vision, playing with their feet, taking good angles, and being tough. Um, and I think all those things still, even though, you know, this is an old presentation, these all stay true today. Um, I think the mistakes we make is when a guy stops their feet, they drop their head, which is a big time no-no open their arms or take bad angles, um, and then always getting back to base. So this was kind of how we started, just I'm not gonna read this whole slide to you, but this was how we started talking all the way back in 2010. This is right from our playbook then uh, of how to tackle. Um, and then this is just, you don't have to use these words. This doesn't even matter to us anymore. All this is is talking about um, how we were saying the same things. So when we went out to do a tackle circuit, we were saying eyes on the target, you know. We were saying make sure you come to base, okay. How do you come to base? We were going to shimmy our feet, we were going to holster our hands, and then we were going to finish. Those were the five things that we were going to say as we went through our tackling um, and as we went through our circuits, okay. Um, you know, being a good tackler can you – know, it happens through solid fundamentals. Uh, we work every day on this stuff. Uh, the three things then were approach – shimmy, contact, and follow through. Once again, I'm just showing you that we're getting on the same page here. Okay, I'm not going to read all this stuff. This isn't even what we do anymore. I'm just showing you the kind of the, the basis of all this stuff. And all these words were important because these were what our coaches were saying. When we were teaching the contact phase, the tackle, we were saying these words. Okay. Um, so this was all good. The problem is it resulted in things like this. Okay. This was 2011, and we didn't start tracking this stuff till 2011. These were all of our missed tackles in that season. So in our first game of the year, we missed 13 tackles. We gave up 86 yards and two touchdowns. Okay, Mount Union, you probably heard of the name, but, you know, top program in Division Three. We gave up we, – we had 12 missed tackles for 95 yards. Okay, so the numbers got a little bit better, but now we get to lacrosse and whitewater, and we have 11 missed tackles and 13 missed tackles. You know, the common denominator here was somehow in game one against Central, we won that game. But game two, game seven, and game eight were all losses for us. Um, you know, there was a kind of a direct correlation there. And I think what we found out was, you know, we can get into philosophical debates, all those things. We were at 3-4 defense this year for the first time ever. Um, exclusively a 3-4. We weren't doing multiple fronts, anything like that. 
And we gave up 704 yards alone just on missed tackles. I'm not talking about a tackle that gets missed on third down, they get a first down, uh, and the drive continues. I'm talking that these six times, these right here resulted in touchdowns. Okay, so if you, uh, what we did was we multiplied all that stuff out. You know, we kind of went into our stats for that season. And what we found out, instead of giving up 18.2 points a game, if we would have made all those tackles, we would be at 14.1. And that would have put us second in the conference. We're just building our team at this point. We're building our defense. Would have put us second in the conference. This is a really powerful presentation to show our kids. And then I think what was, what was so telling was both in, in points per game and total yards per game, uh, we would have been a top 20 team nationally. Um, and this was kind of where we were starting that belief of, you know, hey, maybe at Oshkosh we can do something here. We can turn some heads. Uh, how are we going to do it? Okay. Obviously in 2010, showing those words, doing all that stuff, being on the same page, which we feel is important, wasn't necessarily always hitting home with our guys. Um, and I think when we showed this presentation, uh, it really hit home. And I think what – what happened here then was in 2012, okay, so one season later, uh, we were already down. We missed 29 tackles in our conference season. Okay, so we were talking about our conference season of seven games um, where we only missed 29 tackles. And if we went back to 2011, okay, right here, we're going to miss 29 tackles in four games. So that was kind of just the start of guys really taking our tackling drills, um, you know, taking them serious, doing everything they could to try to become better tacklers, uh, listen to the words we were saying, all those things. Um, so we kind of kept track of this. This was 2013. We graduated a bunch of guys. Uh, we were at 52 missed tackles for our 10-game season, which was, you know, 5.2 missed tackles a game. Uh, still talking about uh, four yards per play, and this was actually seven touchdowns, not 17. Um, so, you know, just things like that, you know, 2014 hits. Okay, and now our numbers aren't getting crazy, so this presentation isn't really hitting home anymore. I mean, we've done everything we could. Uh, we had 43 missed tackles um, in the conference year, uh, which I think was like 5.2 missed tackles, something like that. Uh, I have it on the next slide. But, you know, it's only one point, you know, so what does it all mean? Well, in 2014, um, and I'm not going to sit here and, you know, say rugby tackling, whatever. You guys can decide all that stuff on your own. But we became a rugby tackle team, uh, a shoulder leverage tackle team, uh, the Seahawk tackle stuff. Um, if I can give you anything tonight, go to YouTube and literally YouTube Seahawk tackling drills. Uh, there's like a 15 minute presentation by Pete Carroll. And that's exactly what we implemented in that year. Um, so we could categorize tackles now. So there's a profile tackle, a hawk, a hawk roll and a compression. Um, and then you can use a sideline as a defender also. Uh, and like I said, we didn't start this till before our first game of the year. Um, you know, graduated a bunch of guys again. So, you know, what did our stats bear out? Okay. Uh, in 2014, we missed, you know, six tackles a game. Okay. Well, in 2015, it finally takes off. We're teaching the Seahawk tackling stuff for a year. Um, we missed 66 tackles. That was including our playoff games. I think we got to the quarter, quarterfinals that game. We were down to 4.7 missed tackles per game. Uh, and kind of what we found out through tracking the data um, was that a lot of those tackles happened in games um, where, you know, we were going against ranked teams, good competition, things like that. That was our big discrepancy. So we really wanted to focus on 2016 then, the next year, was to just make sure we brought our A game uh, when we were tackling those better, that better competition. Um, so 2016, we played two more games. Um, we had 65 missed tackles, which is was a, probably our best number. Uh, it was 4.3 missed tackles per game. Um, it only cost us 25 yards per game, you know, so we're all the way down from giving up 809 yards in a, in a season, you know, to giving up 25 yards per game. We're down from 89 yards a game to 25. I mean, it was just incredible over kind of a five-year shift in thoughts and philosophies um, and kind of what we do with tackling. So 17, we went up a little bit. Uh, we missed, uh, we graduated, I think, nine starters on defense. Um, so we're back up a little bit. But that's kind of kind of what we, what happened here. Um, so this is what we show our team now. Um, so we're obviously a Seahawk tackle team. I talked about it already. Um, I think it's 
definitely helped us become better tacklers, prevented injuries. Um, but you can still see here in point three, having that common language is still crucial for us. Um, and I don't have that whole presentation on here. I'll send it to anybody, but we have, you know, a con we're going to say these four tackles. We're going to track how, how we do these four tackles. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, leverage um, and how to properly tackle at that point. So we have a hawk tackle, and then new this year, we got rid of the hawk roll tackle. We just call it a roll tackle because what we found is that guys will, will hit the, the shoulder pad or the near peck of a guy and still end up rolling uh, to his leverage. Compression tackle then would be a tackle with two or more defenders on that tackle. Okay. Um, so the big thing is just the leverage and how we track the near hip of the ball carrier. When we, uh, we tell the guys, you know, in 2011, we missed those 8.9 tackles a game. Um, and since 2012, kind of renewed a commitment to that. So since 2012, we've only missed 4.7 missed tackles a game. Uh, our big takeaway is always missed opportunities. You know, we can't miss sacks, uh, tackles on third downs. We can't allow receivers to get yards after the catch. Um, and our, I think the biggest takeaway we got from some of the stuff is every year our yardage after missed tackle has decreased because as a defensive unit, we've taken pride uh, in that effort, tackling and pursuit. Uh, so just kind of showing the last five years to your guys here, uh, should say five there, but you know, 4.7 missed tackles, four, five, five, three, four, four, and four, three per game. Um, and it's just been huge, you know, since that 2011. Thing. So uh, kind of how we use it now um, is we go through every every play uh, and we track missed tackles. So this year, our nickel number 40, he had eight missed tackles throughout the season. Uh, I just talked to him today, so that's one thing we've talked about. And kind of one thing that we learned here by just doing this, this is just a huddle report, and I'll bring that up here in a second. Uh, 40 and 38, uh, that's our nickel in our field corner. They play together a lot, and what kind of what happened is if eight missed the tackle, 38 would be there to clean him up. If 38 missed the tackle, 40 was kind of the next guy in line to make those tackles. But our guys can obviously click right on that. He can watch all eight of those missed tackles, uh, kind of see what happens, what happened, and, and kind of go from there. So, Okay, uh, we also track, you know, what kind of tackle it was. I think the probably the most important thing we got from the rugby tackling stuff was just having those um, those tackles labeled. Uh, so obviously we have a ton of compression tackles, uh, 191 because we're always running to the ball, we're always pursuing. Uh, and I think probably the most telling thing is over the last four or five years, you know, this stuff is kind of you know seeped everywhere in defensive football. And I think the roll tackle, the gator roll, however you want to look at it, is taught a ton more. Uh, than it probably ever was. And I think that's how kids are kind of tackling out, keeping their head out of the game and rolling to their leverage. Uh, profile tackle is just a, a peck, a high tackle, and then a hawk tackle. Uh, we weren't smart enough to change the name to a Titan tackle. We left it as a hawk tackle. Um, and that's a, a shoulder pad into the thigh of a defender. Um, so I think with that, I'm just gonna kind of get into just some of the breakdowns here. Um, I gotta show the screen here again. So the one thing um, we talk about that probably isn't very tough, uh, but we call it a chill technique. Uh, and what this is, um, you guys probably have seen it before. Um, it, it's a it's a tackle where you know you got a corner, maybe not the most physical kid, getting blocked, and instead of just giving up some yards, he runs up there, he gets blocked by the receiver, uh, and the, the, the ball carrier cuts off of him, and the guy's gone for a touchdown. Um, so kind of what we've talked about here is we're going to watch 36 here on the bottom of the screen, okay? It's going to be a screen pass, okay? And right here, instead of just giving ground, okay, and letting these guys, he's got three blockers, we're in a bad spot, don't have very good screen pursuit here, gives himself up, misses the tackle, and now that thing's kind of off to the races, we get lucky it's only a 15-yard gain. I think this is a – and it's old school film, but this is our probably the, the, the clip we show to illustrate this the best. This was from, I think, maybe 2008. Okay, we're in an all-out blitz here, um, and uh, the Mike linebacker is on the tailback. 
okay, on a screen pass, and he dives, gives himself up, okay, and we give up a 60-yard touchdown. Our pursuit isn't as good as it should be, but that kid just gave himself up. Okay, he dove, and I'll try to stop it here, but he dove, got himself blocked, and allowed the tailback to get out right there. Okay, you missed the tackle, great. You know, we're going to teach you how to do things now where you're just going to chill out. So what we try to do, we try to make it seem really cool. Uh, so we use a clip from a Fast and the Furious. Uh, we talk about the chill. Okay, and I don't think you guys can hear this, but, you know, he talks about the rock right here is saying, woman, I am the cavalry. Okay, so we tell people to chill out because the cavalry is coming. Okay, so the rock's coming to help you tackle. So this is what we're talking about here now. We're going to look at the bottom of the screen here. 38. 38 is our field corner. Okay. This is right before half. Okay. River Falls is running a screen. Real classic. We don't tackle very well here. Right. We're kind of running over. Look at 38. He is backpedaling his ass off. Okay. This guy right here is 6'8". This kid is 5'8". Okay. He is not running in here to get blocked so that this thing can be out to the races. He is allowing the cavalry to come. And look at our pursuit coming. We weren't great initially, but watch the effort here now. Watch everyone come. He turns everything back inside, and we get that thing tackled. Uh, River Falls doesn't have enough time to do much with it after that. Um, but just by that little, that little uh, bad pursuit angle here by these two players, okay, 38, smart veteran player for us, just chills out. He gives up ground, and he lets that pursuit come. Um, you know, you want to talk about, you know, great effort, great pursuit. This guy is on the back. That's our Mike linebacker. He had the tailback in this call. And look at him change direction and try to run this thing down, get himself an angle. Um, you know, and that's that. There's four guys into the picture when that thing is run out of bounds is something that we're really looking for. So um, with that, I'm going to kind of just share, stay on our huddle. Um, and we have excels for all this stuff. Uh, but if I pull up, uh, these are all of our clips from the season, okay? And I'm going to change my columns here. I have a, a tackle column. I have a tackling column on here. Um, so we can pull up, you know, these are all seasons. I can pull up all the roll tackles. You want to see 8 and 21 miss a tackle. It's all right here. All that information is in there. Um, kind of how we do it is we have a guy um, who used to coach with us. He goes through the film on Sundays. Not everybody has this, but he goes through the film on Sundays for us. He doesn't coach with us anymore, and this is his job. He tracks those tackles for us. So at the end of the season, uh, we can go through it. But I think it's a really crucial kind of off-season study for you. Here's 8 and 21 missing a tackle. Uh, I'll pursue him back here. So um, that's just what I wanted to show you guys tonight, I guess. Um, any questions at all? Yeah, there's a couple on there, I think. Uh, I think it was answered, but he said oh, okay. someone asked, uh, what type of tackles do you see show up most for your team? Uh, and then it goes into what uh, type of tackles do you see miss most? Uh, I think the, uh, the most tackles, obviously, are the, for us, it's the compression tackle. There's two or more people running to the ball, making a tackle. It can be either high tackle, low tackle. Uh, either guy owns his leverage on that. That's our number one. Um, I think the, the one that we see miss the most um, is our field players, like our field outside linebacker uh, coming in on a blitz, uh, division three athletes, whatever you want to say. Um, we just got to do a better job of coaching that up and teaching that kid how to shimmy on a sack. Those are probably the most costly missed tackles we have. And I think what, what we learned through studying it was, you know, okay, the number is great, 4.3, but what you really try to teach is just that pursuit and that effort to get your total yards down uh, per game. Uh, and that's really kind of come through, I guess, in, in our film um, and as we keep going forward here. So. And then you had one more. Uh, do you track multiple missed tackles on the same play? Yeah, and I, I showed that, but we'll just make a comma, so – Eight and 21 on the missed tackle, and those guys, those numbers can pull those things up. Uh, we just share that with our guys. And the other thing um, that I'm probably going to do this season, uh, just because we have a little bit more time, is I'm going to divide out eight as an inside linebacker. 
So I'm going to make a cut up of all of the inside linebacker missed tackles, all the outside linebacker missed tackles, and just send that to our guys. So even though they might not have been on the film, they can kind of study how guys miss those tackles. So Perfect. That's awesome. all. Thanks, Dad. Yep, Thanks, thank guys. You.